I want to talk about the best lens for food photography. And before we get any further into this, I'm going to give you three options. Now, this is the best lens if you can only have one. Obviously, there's like a cascading tier when some lenses suddenly drop in ranking because of other options. But this is, if you could only have one lens, this is what I think it should be. But I'm going to give you two other options because the first option can be a little bit daunting and scary. And that's because it's this. And this is a 45 millimeter tilt shift lens. And I'm going to tell you why it's the best lens as well. Now, a classic food setup is a 50 millimeter, a 100 millimeter, and a 35 millimeter. You've got your wide, middle, long. This lens, although it doesn't cover the long, it does cover the wide and the middle. And it does so because, firstly, we can take three shots by shifting the camera along the lens like this. And from the same position, this 45 millimeter lens will give you a 24 millimeter perspective, which is very useful. I've used it a lot on big shoots where I've turned up somewhere and the ceiling's a little bit low. This comes out. It also means that the distortion doesn't happen in the same way because you're not bringing that 24 millimeter lens in closer, you're keeping that 40 millimeter lens far up and shifting it along. Secondly, it's a 2.8, which is pretty fast. It's manual focus, but if we're shooting food, we don't really need autofocus. It also has the ability to tilt the lens like this. And this lets you change the plane of focus. So you can have a diagonal sort of across the frame thing going on. Or if you're shooting from above, you can increase the depth of field, or just by doing this, you can reduce the depth of field. Now we use these lenses a lot in the studio, especially when we're shooting stuff for cutout, when you want the entire plate in focus to be cut out. So even at F22, you're not gonna be cutting that thing out with a sharp background. Whereas with this at F8, we can get that whole thing in focus. Optically, these are great and price-wise, you can get them for about four to 500 pounds secondhand, which is less than the best Canon 50 millimeter lens and about the same as a Sigma 50 millimeter art. This is the best, almost versatile single lens for food photography. However, it's daunting. You need to learn the shimflung principle, manual focus, hyperfocal, all those little bits of pieces. It's a bit of a techie, techie way to go. However, it doesn't take you that long to learn it. And the possibilities that a lens like this creates are huge. So this is what I'd recommend, but I fully understand if you're a bit scared to do that, in which case I'm gonna give you two other offerings that are great food photography lenses and explain what style of food photography they'd work best for. Now I'm gonna start off with a lens that I use for almost everything. My entire portfolio is shot with this. This is a 100 millimeter. Now it's not actually a macro lens anymore, but it focuses very close. The previous version of this was, this is the Zeiss Milvus Planar. Um, it's a T-stop lens. It's a beautifully made lens, this one is. You don't have to buy this one. The Canon L version is great. The Canon Gold Ring version is great. And I'm sure Sigma, Sony, or whoever else, Nikon, make them make great ones too. It's more the focal length. Now, the reason I use this is because I shoot a lot of flat lays. I want zero distortion, extreme detail for my style of work. It's very good. Now, those who want those bocalicious photos are sort of more editorial environmental shots. This can also work too, but it isn't the lens I'd go for if that's your only lens and that's the style of work you're going for. If you want that more natural look, I'd go for this. The classic 50 millimeter lens. This is the Sigma 1.4, which I believe is the best bang for buck. Um, if, if I had a bit more money, I'd get the Zeiss one for this, but I don't use it enough for my work. I've probably used this lens five times this year, um, which is why I don't have an expensive copy of it, but this is good enough. I've shot a billboard with this lens. It's a 1.4, from about 1.6 onwards, it's great. And if you want that gooey bokeh, if you want that environmental look, if you want that really like natural look that's very popular in food magazines, this is the lens for you. I'd still choose the 45 millimeter over both of them if I was gonna have just one, but I understand why people don't do that. Now, if you're a food photographer and you use something completely different to any of these three, let me know in the comments below because I'd really like to hear. And also send me a link to your work down there too so I can see what you're creating with it because it's always interesting to see how people are using kit differently or different kit in the same genre to create different looks or sometimes the same look. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.